Hi, I'm Sharon Middleton from MateWaves. Um, MateWaves is the largest safe social badging platform for schools. We've been working in education for 12 years and we've been using Amazon Web Services for the last seven years. Can't seem to get the clicker to it. There we go. Um, I can talk about our journey onto AWS. But first, I just wanted to share with you something that's happening right now in education that at MateWaves we're really excited to be a part of. And the reason that I wanted to share that with you is I think it provides a really useful frame to then look at how as an organization we are approaching AWS. There are lots of amazing aspects to education in the UK, but there's one really crucial area where it isn't working for a lot of our young people at the moment, and that's in the transition out of education and into the world of work and into employment. And as an organization, we're hearing that anecdotally from schools, from parents, from young people, and from employers. So I just wanted to share a couple of quotes for, with you about that. There's one uh, video posted by a young person online where they comment, the journey from education to employment is broken. A few years ago, Google commented that qualifications are worthless as a criteria for hiring. This year, new research came out from the British Chamber of Commerce that 88% of UK firms say school leavers are unprepared for the world of work. And even awarding bodies are looking at this now. City and Guilds on the TechBack website state, the current education system doesn't do enough to support young people in developing the skills they need to succeed in the workplace. And we're hearing from the majority of employers that we talk to that they're actually Googling candidates that apply for a job before looking at the CV because formal qualifications and standard CVs aren't giving them the information that they need to distinguish between the different applicants and to find the talent that they need as employers. And what we're seeing at MateWaves is that actually open badges could provide a really interesting solution to this problem, a solution that's relevant to young people and displays information in a useful way for employers. Has anybody heard of open badges? Okay, just a few. So open badges are a new way to recognize and surface young people's skills, but they can also be a really interesting new way for young people to find opportunities and to start to know what are the skills and qualities and values that employers want to recruit on. They are also a ground up movement, so being pushed forward by schools, by universities, by employers and by young people themselves. So they're not hung on a piece of policy that has the chance to be removed after May. So I thought this slide would be useful to share with you. Um, it is a, a, it's a project called Badge the World, which is starting to capture all the open badging that's happening across the world. So it's just to show the scale that open badges are starting to operate at and that they are coming into the language of education and learning. They are becoming part of that language of accreditation and recognition. And that's really important for young people who want to start to use them to communicate out with employers. So at MateWaves, celebrating children's learning, as I said, MateWaves has been an online community for 12 years, and at the heart of that has always been this idea of celebrating children's learning, in particular the learning that isn't always recognised within the formal classroom qualifications and system. However, what we've quickly come to realise recently is that it's the way you recognise that extra learning and the value you place on that extra learning that can make it have real impact for young people. So it's this combination of the MateWaves community tools alongside open badges that are really enabling MateWaves to be a main player within this new open badge uh, global movement. And it's our partnership with AWS that has enabled us to take up this new technology that we find interesting play with it in an agile way, work out what's the best way to approach it, and then support it to be used safely and reliably in education. So just to share with you quickly what an open badge actually is, this is an image that's been created by Kyle Bowen. Um, badging isn't a new concept, so we've all heard of the guides, the scouts, a lot of us probably earned swimming badges when we were younger. Badging has been used to encourage engagement, to recognise the development of skills and to encourage participation for years. 
when badges moved online to digital badges, they became very interested in online gaming. So you could start to move up the levels within a game and be rewarded for that status and skill. And in platforms such as eBay, you could start to earn the eBay Power Seller badge. So badges were no longer top down. They are based on your uh, participation within a community and the feedback from your peers. What Mozilla, who developed the Firefox web browser, wanted to do was see if we could use badges for learning and what open badges are, they're not tied into a platform. So your eBay power seller badge doesn't have much currency beyond eBay. Open badges, the data stays with the earner, so you can start to earn badges in different platforms to represent your skills and then start to bring these together as a media-rich CV that can be shared out with employers and colleges. The other unique thing about open badges is they're not just a flat image that lives online. Baked into the image is if you share it with an employer or college, you can click on that image and see exactly what that young person had to do to earn the, earn the badge. You can see the criteria, you can see who it's uh, issued by and who it's endorsed by, but more importantly, you can see the unique evidence that they've submitted. So if I'm earning the Department of Health Health Champion badge and I've done a week of healthy meals in my home and I've taken a, a picture of those each evening and written a blog about them, that would be my unique evidence, my unique story to share with an employer. Another young person may have done a sports taster week with the children and other children in the school and they could do video interviews. So as part of our work as an organisation, we are dealing with a lot of content created by young people. And again, I'll talk about how working with AWS enables us to do that as an organisation. I'd just like to play you this quick film because I think it is useful to explain um, what an open badge is. It is an American film because it's from a project from the Chicago Summer of Learning. There are a lot of UK films, so if you're interested to find out more about badges, there's a lot happening in the UK, and I can send you the links to those films. But I'd just like to play this for you now. Learning today happens anywhere and everywhere. It happens in a variety of environments, different social contexts, and in a multitude of media. We can no longer think of learning in one way. Our education system faces great challenges in engaging students, keeping pace with technological change, teaching 21st century skills, and creating meaningful assessments of our learning. How do we recognize and value the way we learn today? What if we used badges? What is a badge? A badge is an online representation of a skill or achievement you've earned. They've been used in gaming and online spaces to motivate behavior, recognize achievement, and establish credibility. What if we used badges for learning? Badges could be created and issued by anyone. Schools, online spaces, cultural and civic institutions, community and professional organizations to represent a limitless set of skills, achievements, and knowledge. Badges could be earned by anyone completing programs or projects or demonstrating specific knowledge, skills, and abilities. Badges could be shared on websites or blogs, social media profiles, online portfolios, and resumes, leading to real opportunities like connecting with potential collaborators, earning school credit, or getting a job. Mozilla's Open Badges infrastructure provides the software and open technical standard for everyone to earn, issue, and display badges across various contexts, ensuring that everyone gets recognition for the learning that happens anywhere and shares it in the places that matter. So what do badges mean for learning? Badges let us see that learning goes beyond classrooms. Skills like creativity and collaboration and passionate interests become as important as subjects like math and science. Badges show our learning is more than a collection of test scores and grades, but as learning pathways rich with detail and information. This allows learners to guide their own learning, teachers to better engage students, and employers to find the unique talents and skill sets they need. Badges cultivate social and connected learning where learning happens through sharing. They let learning be recognized and transferred across different spaces and learning environments. Badges make learning more adaptable to change and open to innovation. And most importantly, badges make learning a lifelong pursuit. By letting us recognize the learning that happens anywhere and share it in the places that matter, Badges cultivate values of openness, sharing, and innovation in learning today. 
So at MateWaves, we're involved in a, a several groundbreaking badge projects with really interesting organisations, two of which are the Department of Health and NHS England. And when I re-watched that What is a Badge film after I started working with, within the health arena, I could really see the potential, actually, for badges to have a real impact on public health and the real issues that we're facing at the moment around public health. If you swap the word learning in that film for health or health learning, Badges can show that health learning goes beyond the classroom. Badges can show that health is a lifelong pursuit and that health learning is a social activity. The potentials are just really exciting for us as an organisation and we're really pleased to be working in this arena, arena and pleased that AWS are, are helping to support us to grab this technology and make it usable for schools. The other ways that we're working um, with the technology is with adult learners. So as an organisation, we, uh, we now build versions of our MateWaves community, we build white label versions that are other badging communities for partners online, one of which is IWM, the Institute of Leadership and Management, and they've started to badge and accredit their, uh, badge their accreditation and their qualifications. And also there's a new platform called IDEA, which is from the Palace and the Nominet Trust, and that's around enabling young people to develop digital entrepreneur skills, and they're using open badges as the tool to step young people through that process. Amazon are one of the uh, partners in I IDEA, so there is an Amazon badge that children can now go online and earn through IDEA and through, through MateWaves. Oh, and we're working with employers such as O2 on, the, on developing a new platform that will connect young people actually to employers through open badges because that's just what the missing piece at the moment for this to become something that can really affect social mobility and can really help to improve the lives of young people that aren't currently getting to the jobs that they want and need. So this, was, this is our journey. This is trying to summarise our journey as an organisation and also the journey of education technology that we've been on. So we've been working in schools since 2003. That's us over there in 2003, the first school that we worked in, one school where there was only one computer that had internet access. It was a primary school and it was the secretary's computer. And we were uploading children's poetry, their own voices and images that they had taken in the community, not of themselves, just of the community. And there was uproar and fear from parents around sharing children's content online like this. However, when they saw the impact that it had on their children, on their confidence and on their approach to work, it became a really positive learning experience. And so we began to really grow as an organization and education in technology began to change. And in 2008, we were having a lot of technical headaches that I'll go through into the next um, screen. And that's when we decided to move up to AWS and start using Amazon Cloud. Now in 2015, we have 5,000 schools on MateWaves, 70,000 young people and 10,000 students. And the expectations of schools have changed. Safety is still paramount to our customers, to our schools, but they expect reliability and they expect speed. And technology and education has gone into ICT suites and come right back out again. And it's all about mobile devices now. And a lot of our schools have one-to-one -one mobile policies and bring your own device policies. So we really do need to be um, integrating with mobiles, which we do for our customers. So this was us in 2008 when we realised we had a problem. We, were, we had um, server servers in Sheffield that were quickly reaching capacity that were hard to maintain. We were having to increase capacity uh, monthly and then weekly, and it soon became clear to us that it wasn't sustainable for us to keep adding servers, and we needed to find a new solution. There was a storm in Sheffield that led to some flooding, that meant that um, due to a power cut, we had to run off a generator for three days. Highly stressful for our developers, completely concerning for our schools, and also costly for us as we started to try to manage that system. It was hard to maintain and it was hard to expand. And there were areas of it, like the mail server, that were becoming more and more expensive for us. So we made the decision to move on to AWS. We are still continuing this journey onto AWS in 2015. It does amaze us that every time we seem to have a headache and a problem, AWS seems to have developed an innovative solution for us, which uh, we're really thankful for. 
So S3 and Cloudfront uh, were obviously brilliant in helping us with expanding. Um, and also, at the point that we moved to cloud, we were dealing with terabytes of content, of terabytes of data, content created by children that you really got to handle safely and you've got to handle well and reliably. And moving to cloud reduced our cost by 90% in handling those, that content and that data. The um, EC2 is brilliant for us because we do work with schools and we experience seasonal fluctuations in our use, so it's very easy for us to auto-scale uh, with our white label partners. They can be big names that attract a sudden spike of activity around a competition deadline. And again, it's very easy for us to spin up new servers and more importantly, take them back down again when, when we don't need them. Mobile SDK, uh, we've developed an award-winning app that we are really proud of. It, it means that children are, sh are easily sharing content and submitting media as evidence for their badges through mobile devices. And the mobile SDK makes it much more reliable. It chunks up the uploads for us, which is great if you're uploading on a school network. And also, as I understand it, uh, due to mobile SDK, lots of uh, hassle has been taken away from our developers and they're able to concentrate on developing and innovating. So with a lot of the services we use for Amazon, it's about freeing up our developers so that they can innovate and develop for scale. Our next step is DynamoDB and that is all about us increasing our reliability and our speed for our users. So that is kind of it. We've got the, we've got the mobile uh, and app devices, and um, we are launching Open Badge Academy, which is the piece that I spoke about around connecting young people directly with employers. So we're really excited about the potential of Open Badges, and if there's anyone in the room who's also interested to discuss Open Badges, uh, do, do please come and find me afterwards.